All right. Hello, wine drinking people. We're back. It's Tuesday, May 4th. Getting ready for that Cinco de Mayo party tomorrow night. Cafe Max, the Kermit Lynch wine tasting. But first, we got a lot of material to make it through today. We had the Great Wine Seminar this weekend. This is an event. This is in its 25th year that's been taken over by Bob and Arlette Cataldo from Le Col de Ven. And this year, we had another stunning lineup. The moderator this year, Roger Bomeric, Master of Wine, did another outstanding job for us. This is the third or fourth time he may have been back moderating this event. One of the things that makes this event great is that we have the actual producers. Pierre Lurton, the managing director for Cheval Blanc and Chateau Yquem, was presenting his wines. Eric Rousseau was pre pre presenting the wines of Domaine Rousseau. And we had the president of Opus One, David Pearson, here for Opus One. And Pierre-Emmanuel Tatinger for Champagne Tatinger. A fantastic weekend. We're going to start out with Chateau Yquem on Friday night. This once-in-a-lifetime tasting. What a way to start out the weekend. Hard for anything to live up to this, but everything did uh, present itself in, in excellent fashion this weekend. Um, our Friday night seminar started out with three wines. Why? The Egret de Chateau Yquem, which is something that's seldom seen. This wine is 50% Sauvignon Blanc and 50% Semillon, a little different blend from the sweet wine. Chateau Yquem is about 80-20 Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc. And this chateau's history dates all the way back to 1593. And this is a wine that our first, our third president, Thomas Jefferson, collected and coerced uh, all of his buddies into drinking in this country. One of the things that began Chateau Yaquem's fame in the United States. But this fa the fame of uh, Sauternes goes further back than that. And the sweet wines, actually, uh, the wine that Jefferson liked was a dry wine like the Accret. This estate was classified in 1855, first a Grand Premier Cru, first among all the estates in the Medoc, even higher than Lafitte and Latour. So they recognized at that time, just 75 years after Thomas Jefferson collected this wine, how great Chateau Yaquem was, considered better than all the other properties of the Omadoc. Okay, and the fact that the Duke, Grand Duke of Constantine in Russia, uh, paid a staggering amount, 20,000 gold francs for four barrels of Yaquem. That's one of the things that made these estates, gave them stature at that time, the amount of money that people paid for uh, the wines. And that was the highest price ever paid for a bottle of wine or a barrel of wine at that time. Okay, the Agrec, we had 2000, we had 2006 and 2007. The 2000 drinking beautiful of the three, probably the best to drink tonight. Uh, really nice, really balanced, a lot of lovely candied pineapple fruit, a little bit of that spiced oak, a little bit of this scotch kind of note to it uh, from the barrels. Very intoxicating. The 2006, uh, a bit richer, a little more alcoholic. Uh, really nice, uh, drinking really nice right now also, but the blockbuster of those three were the, was the 2007. This wine had lovely white floral notes, pineapple, caramel, and a bracing acidity on the finish that would lead me to believe this wine is going to age for a very long time. The Gretti Chem 2007, my wine of the vintage in that flight. Okay, the Chateau Yaquem flight was up next. We had 14 wines from Chateau Yaquem beginning with 2005. 2005, an outstanding vintage in Bordeaux. It hit the trifecta, great for sweet sweet, dry, and uh, the red wines. And this 2005, still a baby, but showing all of its stuff uh, in proportion, really excellent. 2001, just a blockbuster. This is a killer wine. This wine is still a baby, but man, I could drink a bottle of this for lunch any day of the week. Just beautiful, sappy, a real blockbuster. Uh, next up, 99, uh, okay, not a great vintage in Sauternes. 97, oh, pretty good. Uh, 1996, uh, very nice, uh, a little lighter vintage for Sauternes, uh, but still uh, kind of an academic Sauternes, a classic year. 19 95, uh, excellent. We didn't have a bad wine on the table. Even an off vintage of Chateau Yquem. Well, they don't make it in off vintages. But one of the stars of the night, the star lineup of the night, was the 1990, the 89, and the 88. These, these three vintages in succession were outstanding for Sauternes, and they all three showed outstanding. The 1990 may be edging it up a little bit over the three, but they were all three killer. We do have a little 88 still available in the store, and I've listed for you next to the wines the price that we have in the store, if we have it available. 86, uh, this wine was very nice, although some tasters didn't appreciate it. I thought it was excellent. Uh, low sugar year for Sauternes, maybe not as ripe as the other years, uh, but had this little petrol kind of note that made it interesting. And then the 70 
65, the 67, and the 62 uh, are three dinosaurs. Uh, outstanding. Well, I'm sorry, the 59 was uh, the dinosaur of the group, and this wine was uh Outstanding. Starting to take on some of those little mushroomy characters that you get from Sauternes uh, when they get to be this age, 60 years old. And a phenomenal tasting with Chateau Yachem Friday. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.